Okay, so very quickly, I'm just going to take you through uh, the background to the Centre for Carbon Measurement. Um, as you all probably know, MPL set this centre up almost a year ago now, um, and I actually joined NPL just before that to launch and run the centre. And it made me smile when Lois earlier was talking about is a tonne of carbon a tonne of carbon? Because the main reason that I joined NPL was because I'd been grappling with exactly that question in emissions trading and the carbon offset market for quite a few years, looking at, at it from the policy point of view. And uh, having come upon NPL, I realized that this was the organization that could maybe tackle the, the, the problem from a scientific standpoint. So uh, what I was going to do in probably no more than about six or seven minutes is talk about three things. One, how we set up the center. Secondly, a very, very brief overview of the three areas that we focus on. And the reason that I'll only talk about that briefly is because we do have uh, quite a few technical sessions over the next couple of days where you'll be able to go into more detail the sorts of issues that uh, we and um, all of you are working on. And then finally, why we did it. So um, we set the centre up with the support of a lot of organisations and uh, in particular the government. We have a huge amount of support from the National Measurement Office and from the science minister, David Willis. And he highlights one of the reasons for setting up the centre, which is confidence in the measurement. And he also highlights uh, one of the things that we think is critical about uh, setting up this centre, which is the need for partnership. Um, the point of this centre is that we would like to do more in partnership, not just with business and academic partners, but with other national measurement institutes. And we want to build on the, and inform the work that we're already doing with all of you by doing more of that in the future. Um, we're the centre of this hub, which contains a lot of different organisations working on issues of this type. So universities, businesses, government departments, and other research institutes. And these particular organisations form the basis of a stakeholder advisory forum that we have, so kind of an informal board, which has helped to set the agenda for the work that we're doing and to help us decide where we want to create areas of critical mass for the UK. So as part of this hub, we work with others to avoid duplication across the UK, uh, to identify what capability exists where and where the gaps are, and to ensure those that need measurement services uh, can see where and how to access them. So there's three areas that we group our work in under this centre. Uh, climate data, carbon markets and accounting, and low carbon technologies. And as I said, I won't go into detail on those three themes, but do ask me if you want any more information about what we do in any of those areas during the next two days. So then finally, why set the centre up? Well, um, and by this, I don't, I don't mean why do we do this kind of work? NPL was already doing a lot of this work in the first place. I mean, why have the structure of a, an additional centre to, to do it under? What does a centre add? Um, and it's very similar to those NMIs that already have a theme uh, along the lines of environmental, climate change, or clean technology, which I know a number of you already do. So the major reason why we set it up is to increase our impact. We think that by doing all of these things, having a more coordinated approach internally, looking like we have a more coordinated approach, approach externally, increasing our profile and so on, we'll therefore be able to increase our impact. Um, we also have a better opportunity to have a two-way interaction with policymakers. So it's easier if there's a central coordination function to both feed into the policy, so some of the climate data work that we're doing and some of the work on low carbon technologies, but also to find out from policymakers where they think we should be focusing and what the critical issues will be for the UK that we need to address. So it's really helped that two way interaction with policymakers. At the same time, it's helped us determine where to focus our investment. So we've been able to put together a strategy that says, because of the gaps for the UK, because this is what policymakers would like us to focus on, because this is what businesses need for the future, these are the areas that we want to invest in. 
And as a consequence, over the summer, MPL has made quite a few decisions about growing particular areas of critical mass under the theme of climate change and low-carbon technologies. And so we're increasing our facilities, our resources, and uh, a lot of the capacity in our teams focusing on this as a direct result. I already talked about um, coordination, and that's both internal and external. So um, internally, it makes it easier if we can connect together, and a, a lot of this was already happening, but we can make sure that we're always connecting together diverse bits of capability that are tackling the same issue. So one um, area where this has come up recently is with carbon capture and storage, where we have a group focusing on direct emissions measurements in air. So we can do quite a bit of the technology development and uh, leak detection testing that's a requirement for implementing carbon capture and storage. But also for the UK, one of the big issues for carbon capture and storage is that the storage is going to be primarily offshore. So we also have an acoustics group that could potentially detect uh, leaks of carbon dioxide under the sea. And so in order to um, increase our impact in that area, we can both coordinate that work together internally, but present it and increase our po profile by doing so uh, as a package externally, because often stakeholders externally don't really care how the divisional structure works and would rather interact with one person than many. Um, and then finally, it's been able, because of all of these things again, to increase the amount of partnerships um, that we're partnerships that we're working on. So not only with other NMIs, but with universities that often have very similar structures. Uh, they often coordinate work as part of a centre. So our hub has been able to interact with their hubs, and we can uh, communicate much better. And also with businesses. 